First things first, make sure to let us know what you're interested in this week. We have a few codes from 11-Bit Studios to give away. Hi everyone and welcome back to Switch Up. My name is Mark Walker. Unfortunately for Glenn, having a relaxed in air quotes week last week has caused him to get ill. And uh, yeah, if he was to voice this, it may well be the end of him. So he scripted it and I've offered my dulcet tones. And this is the video where we look at the games coming in the following week. So from the dates of the 2nd of April to the 8th, with potentially a few we didn't manage to cover last week. Yeah, Yep, you can still save 10% on your games using code SWITCHUP over at switchup.gg and buying your eShop vouchers there, and it gives us a little kickback to the channel and supports us. What's coming out this week? Well, let's find out. We'll begin by looking at a game that released last week from the sponsors of today's video, and it's one that I mentioned, it's Red Wings American Aces. This action-packed arcade shooter puts you in the pilot seat of 15 different warplanes as you shoot your way through the comic book style environments. Now you can play it solo, in local multiplayer, or take it online in aerial battles to prove your squad has what it takes to be the best. You can play in a team of up to 5 players online as you work together to take down the other team, or go it alone and face off against 9 other players in a race to the top of the scoreboard, which is a really nice addition since their last release. If you'd prefer to play in local multiplayer, then you and your partner can team up to take on a number of game modes, including the full campaign mode which boasts 30 missions, and completing those will see you rack up skill points that can then be used to upgrade your pilot progression skills tree or add to your arsenal. As well as the threat offered by the enemy planes, you'll also have to master the elements as thunderstorms can blast your skill cooldowns and sandstorms may massively reduce your visibility. Other elements include game modes such as score battle, time battle, hide and seek, last man standing and elimination. There's a lot here for your money but you can also get 20% off the base price of £10.79 or your regional equivalent up until the end of the 16th of April. A big thanks to those guys for sponsoring this episode. We'll pop links to it in the description and the top comment. And if you want to support us and them, just have a little look. Dismantle was another game that released last week, and it's an open world RPG where you ascend from your shelter many years after an apocalyptic event to find what awaits you. Sounds like 2022. It's a world with no other humans in sight, and is filled with nasty and vile creatures according to the blurb, and you'll need to find a way to escape the island you're now trapped on whilst enjoying what it calls the bittersweet apocalypse. I mean, <laughs> they're clutching at straws there, aren't they? <laughs> bittersweet apocalypse? You having a laugh? It looks as if you'll be crafting, hunting, and building, but it also mentions things like fishing and farming. It'd be quite interesting to see how they pull it all together, as well as how deep the RPG mechanics are. Let's hope it's absolutely nothing like Radiation Island. Shudder. Finally then, for those already out, we've got Diesel Punk Wars. This is a vehicle building machine set in an open world where, according to the blurb, you'll be constructing the war machine of your dreams. It goes on to say that there are over 300 unique elements, many different materials and paintable armors, plus you'll be able to use your machine in different environments such as deserts, mountains and swamps. You'll be taking part in massive battles, needing to discover the weaknesses of your enemies with weapons including flamethrowers, missile launchers and close combat weapons. Now it sounds a lot of fun, although it appears to to be a single player only game which surely diminishes a lot of the appeal. However, if it still appeals to you, it's out now and it costs £13.49. It has 15% off this price up until the 10th of April. Alright, coming this week then, and one I'm really excited about as a massive Star Wars nerd, we've got LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. This one clocks in at 14 gigs, and it's the latest licensed LEGO game that allows you to play through the story of nine Star Wars Saga films, no doubt told with the classic LEGO humour. There are hundreds of characters to play as, vehicles to command, and battles to engage in, in what's being billed as the ultimate LEGO Star Wars experience. Now, I'd be interested to know what the general consensus is, but I personally prefer the LEGO games when the characters didn't actually talk, and instead the humour was all portrayed through physical comedy. It's not a knock on the gameplay of those that have come since, but just from a storytelling perspective, this always worked better for me. Let me know down below what you reckon. Anyway, if this one's for you, it's coming on the 5th of April, and it's going to set you back £49.99. 
Then there's Outbreak Contagious Memories, which describes itself as a return to the 90s survival horror as you play as a character named Lydia, desperate to escape the undead. It says here that this is a soft reboot of the Outbreak series, one that I have very little knowledge of other than knowing that there were a fair few of its installments available on the Switch. And judging by the trailer, it appears to mix the fixed camera perspective of traditional Resident Evil games with some of the over-the-shoulder viewpoints that you saw in parts 4 to 6, and maybe even a bit of first person, as is the case in the newer Resi games. Plus, the main protagonist looks a bit like Claire Redfield, so it's fairly safe to assume there was some inspiration. This one can be played either solo or local multiplayer, which is a nice touch, although its price pushes it way out of impulse buy territory for me at £26.99. It needs a demo at that price, but you might still be interested. This one's out on the 6th of April. This can't be a good omen. We're all going to die down here. On the 7th, you've got Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter from Frogwares. And before we talk about the game, a little update on the studio. Now, as many of us know, they are a Ukraine-based studio and they don't expect any of their team to work, but their teams have essentially fled to other EU countries and are working remotely. It's obviously a very difficult time for them, but they've essentially said, look, we got to carry on. we got to carry on doing what we, what we love, what we set our lives to, and that's exactly what they're going to do. There is a full statement available. If you want to go read that, perhaps we'll be able to pop a link to it in the top end comment. But this is the second of their Sherlock Holmes games to be ported to the Switch, following Crimes and Punishment. And it plays in a very similar fashion as you take on a number of cases, interviewing suspects, gathering clues, and using the information to fill out your deduction board to help you solve each case. It delves into some fairly dark family secrets after a new neighbour begins to interfere in his personal life. I played the game on PS4 when it first released back in around 2016 and enjoyed it. And the recent port of Crimes and Punishment was also pretty sound, although it did begin to chug a bit towards the last couple of cases and was a bit too expensive considering its age. I have a feeling that those words may ring true here too, although you can get 25% off here if you own one of Frogware's other Switch releases, and obviously with what we said at the start, they certainly need the support. I'll put a link to our Crime and Punishment review in the top pinned comment if you want full details of how that one fared. Also this week we have Happy Humble's Burger Farm, which is a first person adventure horror cooking game. Of course it is. You'll be working the late shift at this fast food joint and need to cook the food and keep the customers happy as unhappy customers makes mascot happy, upset, and you do not want to upset happy. It looks like a mix of Five Nights at Freddy's and something like Order Up. It could be fun, but let's be honest, they should have tried to get the license rights for McDonald's for this game. After all, there's no scarier mascot in existence than Ronald. I'm pretty sure it was him that pulled Georgie's arm off from inside the storm drain and used it to make Big Macs. Pennywise was just a cover story. Anyway, unusual clown filled tangent over. This is going to cost you £17.99 or your original equivalent, but it does have 10% off this price until launch. Next, we have Chinatown Detective Agency. You play as Amira Damra, once a rising star of Interpol, but now a private detective, about to take on her first case in a crime-filled neon-lit Singapore in 2037. Now, what sounds interesting with this game is that the blurb states that some of the clues to progress are not necessarily found within the game itself, but will require real-life research. So it may lead you to realizing that you need the words of a famous quote to progress, for example, but won't give you that quote. You'll need to research it through other means, like a real detective. Quite a unique and bold take, which will hopefully pay off, apart from to that one guy who lives in the middle of nowhere, with no internet, and he only visits his mothers to download games, he gets home, and well, yeah, it's going to be upsetting, isn't it? It comes via Humble Bundle Games, and it's going to cost you £19.99, or your regional equivalent. This one's always two steps ahead of you. You can call me Tiger Lily. And you can rest assured that anything important that happens in this city, I'll know about it first. And there's the young politician. Next, we've got a cheap and potentially cheerful game called Slipstream. This is from Blitworks, and it's an arcade-inspired racer. It looks a bit like OutRun in terms of its style, but also has a rewind mechanic and local multiplayer. It says you'll be drifting through cities, deserts, forests, mountains, and beaches using the skills of rewind and Slipstream to move up the rankings. Plus, there's a soundtrack which draws from synth, pop, and jazz fusion. Might be one to look out for. It's going to cost you £7.99.
And finally for the week, another one I'm sure many people are going to be interested in is Chrono Cross, the Radical Dreamers edition. And we'll certainly be trying to get a review of this one for the channel. It's a remaster of Chrono Cross, which first released for the PlayStation in 1999, although it never actually came to Europe back then. And it's a sequel of sorts to Chrono Trigger, with it being set within the same universe. It's an RPG with a story that transcends time and space and includes over 40 party members to meet across two interlinked parallel worlds. For this remaster, character illustrations have been refined, 3D models have been converted to HD, enemy encounters can be turned on or off, and there's an auto battle function, very similar to some of the Final Fantasy games we've seen brought across, although hopefully looking a little bit better than some of those. As well as that, it includes the 1996 short text-based adventure game Radical Dreamers, which was written as a sequel to Chrono Trigger but became the basis for the story of Chrono Cross. It originally launched on the Satella View, a peripheral for the Super Famicom in 1996. Now, it's great to see Chrono Cross finally get a proper European release. Let us know if you were lucky enough to play it back in the day or, like us, a no-show in your region meant you never got the chance. It's going to cost £15.99 or your regional equivalent, although there is a PlayAge release coming at the end of April, which has English. We also do have a link to PlayAsia at the top in the pinned comment where you can save 5% if you use code SUP2022. What a glorious little plug. So there we have it for this week. A thanks to Glenn who will be making this one. I'm doing the voice because unfortunately the poor guy has just had a series of illnesses which have rendered him sounding like some form of London based goblin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. If you enjoy the content, then do consider subscribing and all that stuff. But if you want to save a bit of money, use code SWITCHUP to save 10% over at switchup.gg. Thanks to our patrons. You guys are amazing. We passed 100 and the support is really appreciated. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch Up. Cheers, guys. See ya!